How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shit. Welcome back to Bubble of Monday and Adoration. Oh, oh, YouTube, be kind. I hope, like, last week was interesting. Very, very fun. But oh my gosh. These girls are insane. This squad is insane, but I love it. Like, it's been a bundle of fun this entire time. Like, it's one of those really interesting things because it's like, it feels like we get that extra feel, like, or altered fable feel. But it's in the like alternative universe. It's nice to know that there are more like that people are being silly. That there are people who are having fun in this like you know in this horrible horrible world that they live in. Like there are people who are finding joy, and that's really really cool to see. Like it's something that we don't get to see a whole lot in alternative timelines. So it's just nice to see that. Uh, it's also just a great cast of characters. They're very, very memorable. I'm probably going to remember Adoration for a while now, and it's a nice breath of fresh air. I have a feeling that the the last part we're going to cover, the the, la the last uh, short story that's a part of Melodies, is going to be a quick turn into the darker side of the story, so that'll be fun. Hooray. And that'll be just the, the prelude to like the day after, which is going to be super long because it's five games. <laughs> Oh boy, but let's just jump right in, shall we? Go for more shenanigans and see what other nifty little tricks are going to be coming up. Anyway, so Lieutenant Brar, what do you have to get out? You alone? Lieutenant Brar, well, what in luck. And to make matters worse, he keeps calling me kiddo. Oh, how would I love to? How I would love to ignore him, but alas, he is my superior officer, as my dear brother Ka, Ka, uh, Kahachiro used to say. Good manners are the foundation of manly character. Thus, I must show the lieutenant due respect, even if I don't think much of the man himself. Is something the matter, Lieutenant Brar? Oi, oi! Shikou to hatsugen ga gyaku ni natte ne ka? So yu honne wa kokoro no naka ni shimatte gumon daro ga. My apologies, Lieutenant Brar. Now, if you would excuse me. Oi! Wait! Wait! What is it, Lieutenant? Pardon? I mean, I can kind of get that he's got like an annoying vibe to him, but I, I don't know if he's quite earned like our Drew Iyer yet. It's really interesting that he's so like, oh, I don't like you. Do I look like I need any his help? I must be plotting something, I'm absolutely certain. I'm grateful for your concern, and if you excuse me though, I need to take a shower. <sighs> As a man of Mouse, House Makabe, I would never lower, uh, I would never lower himself to such villainy. The thought hasn't even crossed my mind. Is that just supposed to be that we look young? I mean, he does look pretty short. <laughs> I'm not hiding anything. It was nothing. But busy. I only gave her a massage. That's not all shady at all. Hi, hi. Yeah, probably. Unbelievable. Presence of mind, presence of mind. Don't let these baseless accusations throw your mind into disarray. Lieutenant Falkenmeyer went back to her room and to put away the kimono, and I'm going to the nearby shower. That's all. There's no need for any sort of guidance because. I can sense his mischief and ill intention oozing from his every word, but if I lower myself to his level, I would dishonor the name Makaba. Believe what you will. If that is all, I really need to get going, Lieutenant. I do not intend to sneak anywhere. Good day to you. I'm pretty sure that's not correct. It's the other way around. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's yeah, what a he's kind of a brat. Inconceivable. Lieutenant Brar uses multi-layer tactics. I can't afford to lower my guard around him, trying to fool me by casually describing the wrong sign. How far is this villain willing to go? 
I can read him like an open book. He wants me to enter the woman's showers by mistake. It's dreadful to think what could have happened. I would have been branded as a pervert. My place in the polite society gone. Forever. All his talk about voyeurism? Merely a distraction. Empty words to make me lose my composure and fall right into his trap. But I won't fall for his shenanigans so easily. I love that word, shenanigans. Think you can fool me with a cheap trick like that? How dare you! You are way out of your league, Lieutenant Brar. Who is the fool now, sir? Heh <laughs> Oh dear. We're in a shower of some kind. Yeah, this is gonna go great. I can already feel it. The tingling of Muv Love's typical energy, especially when it comes to the nut casery. It's coming up. Every time we've gone to a shower that's actually had scenes, it's got something that goes on. Thank goodness for the hot shower, washing away the disgusting sweat. How convenient would it be for my mental fatigue? Worries and misunderstandings could also be washed down the drain like this. But I realize there's no point dwelling on the impossible. I should rather use my time for something practical, such as giving myself a Bacchus style massage to relax my muscles. Huh? No way, Lieutenant Brar. Is this another one of his schemes? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! It's her too! Is, is that. Can it be? Oh no. Was that a pocket fire? Impossible! Did she misread the signs outside? No, no, someone as attentive to detail as her wouldn't make such a stupid mistake. Did you make a mistake? Then again, she always did carry herself as if she were on the battlefield. Could it be she could con consciously disregard the rules, even though the facilities here are clearly separated by gender? I stand in awe of your dedication, Lieutenant Falkenmeyer. To think you would go so far as to simulate what life in the harshest of the front lines would be like. Um, um, um. <laughs> oh no! Kokusai問題はよくないよ。別に国際問題などないと説明しただろう。お前こそ今日は何をしたんだ。しかしよ、テルベルスの挑戦を受けて立ったのよ。まあ、これない方々ですこと。それで結果はいかがでしたの? What is happening? How? how okay, I here's the thing. If I were Takara, I'd be like, well, duh, he got it to the wrong side. You got to twist it around. But we're talking about Seijiro. Like he's like as straight-laced and as efficient as I've ever seen. He's never intentionally been an idiot. He's been kind of dumb a couple times, but usually it's more about, like, his pride rather than, like, misreading a sign. Ugh, Lieutenant Volner and Witzel... Witzel been too? もちろん勝ったわ。完全勝利よ。なんだ、イルフリーで。またあいつらを一方的にいじめて楽しむ遊びをやったのか。Squad. <laughs> And Lieutenant Lo uh, Losternotch? How could all of them make the exact same mistake? ちゅうい。そういうおっしゃりを don't show them any mercy just because they're supposed to be on your team. And now even Lieutenant Farnharst is here? Of the seven heroes, the White Wolf Queen herself. To gaze upon her nakedness would be blasphemy! It puzzles me to no end. Why did they all make the same mistake? Why are they using the men's showers? Well, maybe. Just maybe. I'm the one who made a mistake. I mean, the, the numbers say that. In light of this situation, the most natural conclusion is that me who has made the mistake. This Occam's razor in action. Conceivable. Does this mean that I make me a peeping Tom or even an outright sex offender? Receiving such a despicable label would be the most humiliating experience of my entire life. I would say in the name of both House of Akaba and the Royal Guard. I could never be able to set foot in the Imperial soil again. But how do I escape? Do I just hold my breath and wait here? No, that plan won't work. There are communal facilities over 24 hours and they're used by every unit at the base. If, if people start coming to take showers one after another, I'll have no way to justify my unnaturally long stay here. Thus, a prompt escape is the most desirable course of action. Oh, whoops. Looks like I misread the sign for the boys and the girls' showers. How silly of me. Ha ha ha. Out of the question is if I can pull that off. That's true. He knows himself fairly well. It would be an entirely different story. My eldest brother, Sechirio, were in my place. He was known for to be honest and reputable character. No one would believe me, though, since I have yet to build up any substantial rapport with people here. What am I supposed to do? 
ジークリンデ様のお肌は、白くてきめ細やかで、まるで絹のようですわ。ネクネーム。羨ましいです。Oh boy. ありがとう、イルフリーデ。でも、あなたのお肌はもっと素敵ですよ。艶やかで、みずみずしくて。えそんな、わ、私がジークリンデ様より素敵なんて。Uh... The heck? I don't understand German, but I'm not so sheltered that I can't read the mood. The atmosphere has somehow become amorous. Whoa, 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 what the devil are those women doing? Don't think about it. Try not to, try to feel, try to feel it. No, don't think of that either. Just, what are you thinking, you absolute fool? Mata Jeek Sama ni kama te itadai te iru no ka? Iru free de. Amari me wak o kake suru n janai zo. Eh? Watashi, Jeek Sama ni go me wak o kake suru tsumori wa? Dai jobi yo iru free de. 私はあなたを迷惑に思ったことなど一度もありませんわ。Careful. ジーク様。ありがとうございます。私のことよりもブリギッテよ。あなたの体調なのだからね。はい。えっ、ー、と、しょ、小体調のお肌は、精感で、キレがあって、まるでしなやかなムチのようですわ。<笑> 10 out of 10. Compliment again. Holy crap. How could you even think that would be okay? Oh my. Jeeks, I'm going to eat a little bit. I'm going to eat a little bit. That wasn't something nice. Yes. I'm going to Sage? Did they just call it a falcon horse? Sage? Sage? Is that supposed to be Sage? Maybe that is sage. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen sage written out in any way other than like the plant sage, S A G E. So they can address her by nickname in the showers, despite normally using her last name and rank. The naked truth is exposed in this place. However, nakedness is something I cannot partake in with them. Brigitte, I think we are going to go to the next one. Yes. Well, both of you これから国連や欧州連合のお偉方と楽しいおしゃべりだ。Very fine people, huh? まあ、それは難儀ですこと。ダメよ、ルナ・テレジア。そのようなことを言っては。では皆さん、ごゆっくり。The two of them left. This is my chance to make a daring escape. The others are still here, but since training is over, the number of people inside the showers will only increase from now on. My window of opportunity is rapidly closing. Too bad this place doesn't have a cardboard box I can use to camouflage, but that changes nothing. I'll have to make do with tactical espionage props. What on earth are you gonna do? Slowly without making a sound. Keep advancing slowly. Don't lose concentration. Stay silent. Here comes the edited picture, I'm sure. Your life hinges on a successful completion of the sneaking mission. Don't make a cliched mistake like stepping on a bar of soap. Woo, fool! Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. YouTube, please, please don't hurt me. <laughs> ah, they found me. What the, what a blunder. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. I have soiled the honor of the Empire. I have soiled the name of House Makabe. Now it has come to this. I have no choice but but to commit seppuku. <laughs> this is just right here, right now. I mean, you'd at least die in heaven, I suppose. What am I saying? I'm no longer worthy of even mentioning the name of Makabe. Honor demands I discard my family's ties. Such forth I should be known as Say, for I have abandoned the part of the name that I should share with my brothers. But Say is also a part of the name that was given to me by my parents. Therefore, from this day onward, I should be known as the Nameless One. And now the only path left to me is to slit open my belly. My life will be ended on foreign soil. I shall leave this world having paid for my crime with the soul, with my soul virtuous deed. But before I slit my open my stomach, I must dispel the misconception forced on Lieutenant Falkenmeyer. You see, circumstances leading up to me being here are, well, let's just say it's complicated. Oh dear. So, you Okay, sure, maybe that's it out. No, no. We don't need to go down this road. 
Sir Lieutenant Wilson Benz isn't mistaken, that's how bathing is handled on the front lines. However, much like in Dover, men and women are firmly divided back in the rear. <sighs> nope. Sorry. That's not gonna end well for anybody. Well, I mean, depend depending on definitions, but I didn't... Woman, do you not understand the implications of your words? Lieutenant Falkenmeyer, please admonish the fool. Oh no. I completely understand how you feel. But let's save that for later. Come on now. Let's save the. Let's give Lieutenant Falder a, a strict scold. Oh, okay. This is quickly turning into a very neutral, t neutral ground questions where we're like, do we stay? <laughs> Is there something in the water that makes them dull? Can you look at blushing like a virgin? You're clearly not okay with it. Oh my gosh. Absolutely not. Oh my gosh, that's... Surround sound headphones. They're a blessing. But, oh gosh, that voice. No, you! It's like a hot dagger to his soul. Let's save that for the front lines. Eh! I'm sorry! <laughs> so he just escapes. Whew! Good lord. That, this has been my worst day in Europe by far. How on earth am I supposed to record today's events? I was cleared from suspicion afterwards, but if I write down for those events exactly as they happened, the report would read like a third-rate body novel. Nevertheless, I think the truth is out of the question. <laughs> uh, at least Lieutenant Lutzen Benz prepared another hot towel today, despite the commotion. I don't trust these towels! Consideration is always considered as always. Come what may, I'm thankful for her for, to her from the bottom of my heart. Oh gosh, what? Whew! It's been a tiring day, and the worst part is everything that happened was because of one man, Lieutenant Brar, the fiend. How did he manage to execute such a devious plan? Did he switch them? He switched the male-female signs on the shower rooms beforehand and bumped into me as if it were a coincidence. Then he used his conversational skills to lower my guard. He is devious. He absolutely set that trap really well. It's really vexing. In hindsight, encountering him near the shower at the precise time I was done with my scheduled activity was suspicious from the start. Yes, he must have went ahead, wasting, waiting in the vicinity until I made my appearance. Also, he could casually greet me later. I'm certain that's what he did in order to frame me. Darn him. What tenacity. What cutting. Oh boy, this picture. Everything was going well until I tried escaping. What happened afterwards was distressing. I remember the raw fear when I, when I felt when Lieutenant uh, uh, Farenhorst, Lieutenant Wasternach, Wa 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 entered the showers, a memory that will haunt me to the grave. If Lieutenant Faulner had not come up with an excuse right now, I would be inconceivable. It does not bear thinking about. Lieutenant Brar was caught by Lieutenant Falkenmeyer, and the fact that he readily confessed to his shrewd trick was surprising. His astounding display of honesty aside, it's still hard to believe that such an ignoble man could be a member of a god good standing of Cerberus. Which makes me think there might be a deeper structural issue with the Force that allows such a disgraceful individual to run rampant. At any rate, today I learned the training curriculum includes various competitions and exercises. If I didn't know better, I could have sworn this was a resort, not a military base. I'm not saying they're slacking off, but the disproportionate emphasis on games reflects poorly on command training policy. The people in the space might as well be athletes, not soldiers. I don't know. Recreation and morale are really important for battlefields. Let's hope they prove me wrong. Oh, that was fun. Day four. Oh my gosh, it just keeps escalating. But I think we're finally getting into some TSFs. Sejuro. I really think she just has this motherly, like, natural, like, maternity, like, sense to her. What the fetch is going on? Whoa! 
わーそーっとそーっと。<笑>まだぐっすり寝てるこの時間に起こすのがポイントなのよね。So she just likes pranking, I see. What exactly are you up to, Lieutenant? Again, what exactly are you up to? I'm on to you. I could ask you the same. My sixth eldest brother,、uh, Sekur Sekuro Kuro, never, never heard the alarm clock ring because he always woke up 30 minutes early and turned it off. His example served me well. It's a mere child's play to wake up one hour before the morning call. This is what you get for underestimating House Makabe. I see through you, Lieutenant. You intend to play the same prank on me again. It's only part of the course I, I was going to be ready. Lieutenant, in waking others before the morning call to、uh, call a bunched were custom or something of some sort? Of course you are. That's not something to be proud of! Oh, please. I'm not the one who's trying to play the same prank over and over again. I demand answers. Oh. Please don't dodge the question. Why must you come to wake me every morning one hour before the morning call? Don't just pretend I didn't ask a question. Lieutenant Faulner, please answer the question. She dares to ignore me. Inconceivable. I want to protest. I want, for, I want to protest as firmly as I can, and yet I can't. For that would only come off as a display of entitlement. Yeah. Wait, is she mocking the, gen、uh, the general generalissimo of Dover Base Complex? Just like that? The man who stands above all the other commanders? It looks like we'll spend the day in the presence of the CEO. That means I won't have time to speak at leisure with my fellow cadets. Nevertheless, I'm sure I'll find an occasion to ask them about their other European forces. It's been four days already. Hopefully, the others have learned something useful by now, because I certainly haven't. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's several things I would like to ask them about. However, I don't offer, offer my own analysis and opinion on the state of the European forces. My, any, any, any questions I ask will sound like an exchange of empty platitudes, no better than small talk. The one thing I'm most curious about is hearing what they think of Dover. Namely, if they share my opinion that this place seems best suited for athletes, not soldiers. To tell the truth, the prospect of meeting the other cadets fills me with uneasiness. What will become of me if they have spent their time in proper training environment with their skills having been developed far beyond mine? Inconceivable! Such a de defeatist attitude is inconceivable coming from one who carries the blood of a Makabe. He conquers, he conquers who conquers himself. It doesn't matter if their training has been superior, it doesn't matter if their skills leave me in the dust. Irres irrespective of how talented they may be, no one will fight my battles for me. So say the teachings of my second eldest brother, Kojiro. Clearly, I must reflect on his words. Om.、Oh, um. Reflection、right, complete. My mind has become clear and serene. Not a speck of lingering doubt remains. Okay. Okay, sure. Sure, buddy. Whoa, my clarity of thoughts dazzled even myself. I see what I must do now. Without shame, I should expose my lack of understanding and ask for instruction. As my fifth eldest brother, Uh, Joe Goro used to say, There is no such thing as a stupid question. We must not let the scepter of humanity and failure hurt my self esteem. If I value my pride so highly that I need to fear the other cadet's scorn, my mental growth will soon reach its end. And if they are indeed ahead of me, then all the better, for I will proactively partake in their knowledge and use it to springboard to, re to reach the next level of my personal growth. Do not be impatient, Seijiro. House Makabe has gone through ages of war alongside the Shokadet. This is only one way, there is only one way forward. どうしたの聖十郎ぼーっとしちゃってまさか熱がああ、あ、ah, sorry my mind was somewhere else そうだそういえば明日からはいよいよ欧州統合火力演習の研修プログラムに移行するわね、oh. 聖十郎楽しみでしょう Oh yes It is I can't wait yes That's right I was so worried about the troubles at hand I almost missed the forest for the trees From tomorrow until the last day of my exchange, the centerpiece of my stay, the European Life Fire exercise. 
It's normally a trading exercise, but this term is misleading. Not only will live ammunition be used, but hand-picked units from the European forces will also participate in the event. This is it. This is when I finally get to see Cerberus and the Typhoon in action. A fire burns inside me. A fire so strong that even the flames of hell could compare. It's only natural, Lieutenant. I've been looking forward to seeing Cerberus in action since the moment I set foot in Dover. And that day has finally arrived. But of course, I wouldn't dare call myself a surface pilot cadet otherwise. Okay. I expect great things from you, Lieutenant. Wait, no, 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 no. It's her fault I had to wake up one hour before the morning call. Why am I getting all fired up together with Lieutenant Falner? She got, caught, she got me caught up in her enthusiasm. Unbelievable. And besides, it would be unrealistic to expect her to play a leading role in, Europe, in Europe's premier fighting force in the first place. In the face of real combat, experience trumps skill. It seems highly unlikely a pilot with who was commissioned only six months ago could play a vital part in such a major event. But to be fair, I shouldn't jump to conclusions. My assumptions may very well be mistaken. He's like the only person who thinks like that. It's great. We all should. But oh my gosh. I haven't even so much as glanced at the Lieutenant Simulator results. Right now, I'm in no position to accurately evaluate her performance as a surface pilot. That's fine with me, but why are we holding hands? Ugh. Lieutenant, this fortress base is state of the art. There are countless signs and maps at our disposal here. I simply can't I simply fail to see how I could get lost. This woman, what a pain. Good grief, she's too nice for her own good. It's still like maternal instinct, I'm sure. Ah, no, it's uh oh, what's what's playing the sad music? What's this? No, I wouldn't say so. It was fine, but nothing special. It's just like the accumulated stress getting to me. I'm not lying when I say that there wasn't anything special, but that's precisely the problem. If there was something noteworthy, then if there was something noteworthy, it's that my worst fears came true. Everyone shared the same opinion that there's absolutely nothing to be learned in Europe. The consensus was that the Europeans were lacking in terms of discipline. The very least, when compared to the Royal Guard officers, it was disheartening to find out people could be so laid back on the front lines. As far as I could tell, the, the bunch were, uh, wear was the loosest disciplinary standards. Not that the other European forces seemed all that different based on what the others said. So, yeah, Seijuro, hmm. He's like really bothered by this. Yes, it was very interesting. I was rather surprised to find out how differently the Royal Guard and the European forces are, though. As a Royal Guard cadet, what I want to learn in, uh, learn about in Europe was the mindset and the, vi the way of life of those who had survived on the front lines. What I desired most is to meet veterans who, could live, who had lived through the fierce battles and to benefit from their expertise. Such knowledge would be invaluable when it was my time to defend the Empire. I should have known from the start there wasn't much to learn from my fellow cadets and tempered my expectations accordingly. On the other hand, I did hear a somewhat interesting story. There was this one cadet, uh, though. He was dispatched to the French forces and supposedly had it, ha, has it the worst among us. He told me he was assigned to a female officer, one quite short for a Westerner, and that she worked him to the bone. Chibi. Chibi. Wait, does Chibi... Wait, wait, okay, okay. I need to know this now because this is my be a thing, like... Does Chibi actually like refer to like a midget or like a like a like someone who has dwarfism? You know, like an individual who actually has like a genetic condition that makes them short, not just like a short person for compared to average. Because if so, that sounds like it actually could be very demeaning. And I've always heard Chibi as like a cutesy like like short like draw form. So does that? I always assumed it meant like miniature or like cutesy, but. If not, that actually is interesting. Anyway, in a sea of resi uh, in a sea of resignation, only his eyes were shining with determination. Must be because he's going through a taxing training regime, albeit different from what's the norm in the Empire. It's likely he'll be the only one to bring something of value back to our homeland. And that cadet's 
that the cadet said her position is often called a peculiar designation, the gunslinger. Apparently, she's a close-range specialist who uses four assault cannons at the same time in high-speed dogfights. Oh, that actually sounds really cool. Fetch. <laughs> Can we get to meet her sometime? That's she sounds awesome. It sounds contradictory for a close quarter specialist to rely on ranged weaponry, but maybe it's a very uh, viable tactic in a TSF with lots of close-range combat armaments. The way surface pilots respond to TSF deployments with a new co uh, combat position is a fascinating topic. I would love to see her in action during the live fire combat exercise. The unit has the luxury of housing three of the seven heroes, but they are so far from removed from everyday life that I can't possibly gain any particular insights. Might as well be learning from a textbook. Considering those I've spent the most, most of the time with, well, I believe Lieutenant Falkenmeyer could teach me more about chivalry. That alone does not justify the expense of sending a cadet abroad, however. The hard-earned taxes of Imperial subjects are funding my stay. I must learn something of importance and take it back home, else I fear this will end up as nothing but an exercise in wasteful spending. It's high time I start acting on my concerns, and I might as well start with the person closest to me, Lieutenant Falner. Surely she has viable experience to share. Lieutenant Falner, would you mind if I ask you a personal question? Could you tell me about your first battle? The day I experienced my first real battle draws near. Lieutenant Falner has survived the eight minutes of death. I want to hear what it was like. Uh, well, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, you could tell me about uh, the time when you were commissioned instead. <sighs> it's just that as soon as my training period ends, I'll be commissioned. And since the Empire is, the, uh, is one of mankind's front lines, I'll stand on the battlefield shortly thereafter. That's why I would like to know how you felt the first time you experienced actual combat, and how you faced the eight minutes of death. I'll soon have to do the same, after all. Hope I'm not asking for too much. I heard Lieutenant Falkenmeyer was chosen as a storm vanguard right after being assigned to the unit. The account of a pilot who isn't a natural born genius should prove far more valuable to me, though. Learning about Lieutenant Falkenmeyer's experience should be perfect for my purposes. She's been assigned as to Cerberus, which means she must be an exceptional surface pilot in her own right. <laughs> okay. That would be much appreciated. The infamous eight minutes of death. The term stands for the average time a new surface pilot lasts in his first real battle against the Beta. In other words, most of them die before eight minutes have passed. Look at those guns. Holy crap. I so the lieutenant felt the same way as me when she first saw the typhoon. それから数週間の訓練はとにかくついていくのに必死だったわ。セルベルスでやっていくのだから辛いのは覚悟してたけど、予想以上で。うん。ストームヴァンガードになるんだっていう思いだけで、なんとか耐え続けてたわ。でも
If I had to contribute to a war effort, I'd like to think I could do it on like the, I don't know, like, like coordinating supplies or directing troops with like giving them information and helping coordinate a battlefield. I have a good situational awareness. I like to think that I could do that, but that's again, who knows? Maybe I would just be laughed out of the forces, you know, like literally in a time where they need every uh, able body, they, they might actually just tell me, just go be a civilian and, you know, you know work on a farm or something. I see. Please go on. I'm kind of curious. I'm really curious, actually. その頃はまだストームヴァンガードに見れんタラタラで。ヘルガが本当に羨ましかった。でも実戦に出たらそんなことを気にする余裕なんて全くなかったわ。私がやったことはただひたすらに弾を撃つだけ。情けないけどそれが精一杯だったわ。I mean, からには全然伝わらなかった。Holy crap. She survived, by, but she was frozen and practically unconscious. Kinishinaifuriosteitemo, <laughs> No one wants that to be their first experience, but frankly, I mean, it seems, sounds to me like it's pretty much what you would expect. No, it was very insightful. I appreciate your candor, Lieutenant. It wasn't some grand heroic tale, but the down-to-earth account of what regularly, what a regularly fresh, co freshly commissioned pilot went through. That's what makes it so valuable for someone like me. I have to admire Lieutenant Falner for having the courage to share a painful experience like that. She wasn't just trying to embellish her story either, no matter what I might think of her. She's truly too nice for her own good. Hmm. Nothing happened. It was the usual. So? Well... Perhaps frankness would be the best policy here. I realize now I set my expectations too high after hearing all those anecdote anecdotes about the fierce battles taking place in the European front. The European forces are clearly very professional. They're not to blame for their for my disappo this disappointment. I feel only I am. Like I said, there wasn't anything special, but truth be told, there's been a lot on my mind lately. Lieutenant Fulner gave a stunningly honest answer to my question. As a samurai and a scion of Makabe, it's my duty to return the courtesy. I touched a bit on the subject earlier, but the cadet that was sent to France force the had, sent to the French forces had a glimmer in his eye, unlike the rest. It's hard to explain. He felt different from everyone else somehow, as in I could tell he was satisfied by his experiences here. He was brimming with self confidence. <sighs> If I had to be completely honest, the more I listened to him talk, the more I started to worry. That's why I brought up the question. Bernadette. What's with the sudden change in attitude? She seems so uncharacteristically serious. It's almost like she's transported to a completely different person. I don't quite remember, unfortunately. Although I believe her last name was Riviere. Uh, maybe Riviera. Huh? Oh, man. 
Oh my gosh, she's adorable. A tiger, what? She looks like, yeah, like, okay, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not an accident, right? Like, she looks like a blonde taiga, like from Toradora, taiga. Like, that can't be a coincidence. That's gotta be a reference, right? Am I going insane? That's gotta be a reference. I mean, it's, a, it's a calling her a tiger. Like, it's gotta be that, right? I love this character. I want to beat her so badly. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I talked about before, I'm a big fan of Armored Core and I love the Armored Core 4 game where you get to customize and design your mech. I made the mech, I made a mech that I called the Caesar. I remember it vividly in my mind because I loved this thing, like a passion. But I made it purple with a big rose on it. <laughs> I need to meet this character. Bernadetta, right? Like, Bernadetta, Bernadetta. I need to meet this character so bad. Please tell me that she's an actual person we get to meet. <sighs> right, right. Oh, she's in her, she's in her, like, scary mode. Ah! Yes, I understood. Oh boy, hello, Luna. I don't know. I don't know. Whispers in German, troubles in paradise, perhaps? Oh, yeah? Oh, why would that be? They're like, oh no! <laughs> it's like when anyone brings up visual novels with me. It's like, okay, first we're gonna start with Mubla, maybe some Steins Gate. Tell me what you like first. What kind of books do you like to read or movies you like to watch? And then it's like, it's, we're just gone from there. I like the subtitle subtitles. That's actually very helpful. Liaoki I do like Luna. Like, her voice is very pleasing on the ears, for sure. But she's also, like, I like how she's just a big nerd about TFFs. Like, they're all three kind of nerds in their own respect, but she's, like, a super nerd. <laughs> Why, yes, I'm familiar with the basics. We studied the history of TSF development during our training period in the Royal Guard. I mean, as long as it's effective, like, we're all on the same side, right? Now that you mention it, I remember noticing the Typhoon also strongly, very strongly represents, represents, resembles a Japanese Fubuki. Oh, any, any thoughts on that, Lieutenant Fulner? Seijuro? So, so ah, yeah, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> this is checkmate. Oh, there's that code Gias to pose. I see through you, Lieutenant. You don't want to talk about TSF with Lieutenant Watson, uh, Witzel Ben, but you also want to complain about the Raphael. That's why you foolishly tried to get around the problem by using me. Avoiding direct confrontation with Lieutenant uh, Witzel Ben by ho ho handing the topic over to me. A masterful plan. However, you wrongfully assumed I'm averse to talking about TSF for hours. That was your undoing, Lieutenant Volner. Behold the mighty technique of returning to the topic to the sender. How will you respond, Lieutenant? I'm sure your competitive spirit must be flaring by now. And here's the truly devious part. If you answer, if you are, if you answer, it will become impossible for you to escape Lieutenant Witzelben's incessant prattling. Now for the finishing touch. Following your reasoning, it is logical to conclude th that. It is a logical conclusion. Could the Typhoon, the Raphael, and the Gripen be considered mere imitations of the Fubuki? 
聖十郎くんなかなかやりますわね。Oh no ル。ルナ、聖十郎 She's like, are you serious? Look at me with those eyes full of dread all you want. I will not be deterred, for our Severi always returns the kindness he has received. 聖十郎くんの例えは極めて暴論に近いものですけれど、イルフィの考えがそのくらい乱暴だということですわね。Uh -huh. えーいやそれは分かってるのよ自分でもちょっと言い過ぎたってね<笑>助けてヘルガーあああなさて食事を取りに行くとするか Probably wise <笑>一人にしないで私も行く No you stay here I'm disappointed in you Lieutenant Fulner Do you really intend to let this stand? I have to say, you are very knowledgeable about TSS, Lieutenant Whitson, then. By the way, you said my statement was close to the absurd. This has to be in about the development of the next generation European machine, correct? It's not exactly a well kept secret, Lieutenant. I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Oh, I give you your best shot, Luna. Let's take it. Fist of cuffs. Here we go. Nerd it out. <laughs> She's like, please, let's escape right now. Interesting. Please elaborate. ファントムやタイガー2の回収、発展型の開発で、ヨーロッパには相当の技術蓄積があったこと。欧州戦術機計画が停滞した分、長期にわたって基礎技術の研究開発が進められていたことなどがその根拠ですわ。So how exactly would you explain the resemblance? それは最新の理論、技術トレンド、開発国の戦略地政学的な位置と要求仕様で決まるもの。ベータ対戦における日本とヨーロッパのそれらはことごとく似ています。であれば、機体形状の類似は自明ですわね。うん。I would actually have to disagree with there. Whilst you can say that thing, forms of things like,、uh, like, tr uh, like transports, like cars and trucks, are a development of their function and the, the, the places we use them, you know, Roads and, and pathways and off roads and such, and that the, the style and shapes and alignments have ultimately been designed to mimic their needs based on cultural lines. And thus, yeah, cars look the same across the world even back when they first were coming about. But I would argue that just because they serve similar functions should imply that there would have been a lot more crossover and inspiration drawn from each other because of the implicit need to fill similar roles. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time you make a wheel. The wheel serves a function. The wheel's function is to be served in a certain way. Thus, looking over at your neighbor's work, seeing what works best, and adapting that style to your own is a very practical thing. And the thing is that the world can't afford to be luxurious about this type of process. Naturally, they looked at what worked, saw the success, and started with that as a framework in mind and adapted it to service their specific needs and tastes. Indeed, there's some truth to your words. I won't deny that, that geo strategic and tactical concerns play a huge part in TSF design. Lieutenant Wilson Ben has a good point. The basic specifications should be similar for the EU, the Soviet Union, and other Asian countries. It's true that the Imperial TSS focus on hive capture operations, but that's a minor point. The few differences stem from the national idiosyncrasies and diverging environmental operational requirements. On the other side of the spectrum, you have American TSFs. They're completely different in terms of design and doctrine because their fundamental purpose lies elsewhere. E、uh, Eurasian countries put their emphasis on being able to operate in the continent and inside the, very un and inside the underground tunnel network of the hive. Well, with supply lines being difficult to maintain and space being very limited, the focus obviously lies on high mobility, close quarters combat. On the other hand, the American TSF strategy assumes secure logistics, focusing on their high risk mobility in order to perform low risk, long range bombardments, as well as their ability to adapt to all situations or terrains. What? What is it, Lieutenant? What are you talking about? 
she's implying that that's actually occurred. Despite the regrettable events that transpired yesterday, Lieutenant Wilson, uh, Wilson then remained as kind as ever, proving to me, uh, providing me with another wet towel. I don't know if something like this will be enough to repay her favor, but as long as it makes her happy, maybe Seijiro will be her friend through thick and thin. Makabe, Seijiro. And as my supervisor, Lieutenant Falner is duty bound to remain by my side. Lieutenant Wil uh, Wilson, then? Seems Lieutenant Falner has a, pro has a pressing question. She's like, are you serious? I was trying to help. What are we doing here? Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm listening. I'm listening. Please go ahead. I made a terrible mistake. I underestimated her enthusiasm since she talked about TSFs at length the other day. I believed I had an idea of how long discussion would take, but sadly, Lieutenant Wilson has smashed her previous record. Uh, be that as it may, I cannot leave without it playing her kindness. Endure, Seijiro, endure! For in enduring, you shall grow strong. Luna! Oh boy. Holy crap! What incredible endurance! Her passion for TSS bursts forth like a charging horde of destroyer class beta! The lieutenant's hidden strength can shake the world once it wakes, indeed. Yes. Take it! Take it, man! What's with the last part? You haven't given up yet? She's a dangerous creature, that Luna. It really is a shame. I apologize from the bottom of my heart, Lieutenant Witzel Ben. Perhaps we will continue this conversation someday. However, today is not the day. My hat's off to your, uh, to your love of TSFs, Lieutenant. I've never met someone as zealous as you. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, if she does get married to someone who isn't a TSF, it's going to the ceremony will probably be in TSFs. And other things as well. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of terrifying. She sounds terrifying. <laughs> now that the side of Lieutenant Witzel bends, yeah, I certainly didn't see coming. But considering how crazy she is about TSFs, I can see her going all out and testing the specs for herself. Hardly surprising. In fact, I'm actually in shock I didn't figure this out sooner. That was unexpected, but kind of makes sense. Compared to the three of them, she's the one who strikes me as the most gentle, a genuine aristocratic lady with, a per with perfect manners, and yet she really is the toughest of them all. Ooh. <laughs> those are looks those eyes they're full of a mixture of fear and a death threat she also has to put up with lieutenant Falkenmeyer's shenanigans i can relate oh how much can i relate to the sorrow lieutenant Falkenmeyer must feel what a troublesome friend lieutenant Falkenmeyer must be with her pu uh, pushiness and utter lack of tact She's like, no, don't continue. No, stop. Well, from what little I know, Lieutenant Falkenmeyer, I would guess an antique shop, perhaps, looking at old swords. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not another word. That's... Why wouldn't you? Ice cream's great! 
Oh, it's just because she doesn't like having that. She doesn't want to appear normal. <laughs> Stop! She's already dead! <laughs> She's so funny. You fiend! However, how lovely does Lieutenant Falk admire look in this fleeting moment? Fit to burst into tears any second? Why is my heart beating so fast? I agree, man. I agree. What a rare glimpse of the weakness of a proud military woman. If you would not call this supreme beauty, what would you call art then? It's true, but you seem to not agree. Correct, you are absolutely correct. で、ソフトを買ったヘルガがこそこそと端っこに行って食べようとした瞬間、声をかけたんだけど。よほど驚いたでしょうね。耳まで真っ赤になって涙目になっちゃったのよ。Okay. I I don't think this is like I think I have my thumbnail with the Taiga girl, but like this is a great one too. Look how adorable this is. All three of them. I can't decide actually which one I like her, the ice cream or her eating the, the fish and chips. Just like the, oh, she's like, she looks like a bunny rabbit right there. Aw, they're so cute. Deprived? How big of a bite did you take, you monster? So what did she do exactly, Lieutenant Falkenmeyer? She is evil! How could you? You are merciless! She's just a vacuum. Meaning the ice cream was her wasn't the ice cream was her dessert. My heart goes out to you. It is cruel to steal another person's favorite treat. Ilfried, <sighs> what have you done? My condolences. That's to be expected. It's your justice. I love that. That was so good. That was a great ending. All right, that should do. And that's exactly what I'm going to say for this episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Ah, everything was pretty good. I even like how we got a little bit of a serious story in there. It's like we had like delicious cutesiness and YouTube, please forgive me for. And then like amazing, hilarious, cute stories. And right in the middle is like a tiny little serious note that reminds us where we are in this universe. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for spending the time with me on this video. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you especially to the patrons who are helping me make this channel even more fantastic and helping me expand in ways I never thought I could. It's just the start, but every little bit has been helping. And I look forward to like helping funnel some of that into stuff that you can continue to enjoy for the foreseeable future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Life's been a little hectic lately. I've been trying to get on top of a bunch of stuff and getting ready for going to school in the fall. And frankly, I'm getting a little scared. Like I should be fine. I should be on top of things and I'm good about not overextending myself. But I also recognize that like being in school full time, it's like having a full time job and doing that whilst like taking care of like my normal activities and doing YouTube is gonna be a bit of a tall order. I'm really striving and why one of the big reasons why I'm keeping to three videos a week is because I know I've got lots to do and I don't want to overextend myself in the coming uh, months. But like we I, just a frank talk, keep in mind there's a decent chance that I might have some slowdowns and some missed weeks here or there when I start school full time, but I'm gonna do the best I can. But thank you, thanks to people who are supporting me through Patreon, whether they support me just for one month or whether they continue to support me as long as they can. Like every little bit helps and every little bit's going to help continue to support the channel and giving me that breathing room I need to make things continue to work out. So thank you guys so much for your time and your attention. You are awesome. Thanks for all your like dedication and following the series. And I hope you've enjoyed yourself because man, I'm having fun. I'm having so much stinking fun. So thank you again a hundred times. I can never say it enough. And until the next video watching me or see me next, I'll see you there.